Hey guys, it's Shadow Knight Paladin, and welcome back to my channel. So today we are doing the leftover watercolor challenge, and I say that as if it's an existing challenge, but I don't think so. Or rather, I haven't seen anyone do it, and I'm pretty sure watercolor artists do it on a daily basis or as often as they draw. But this idea came about when I wanted to refresh the palette that you see on screen. As you can see, there's a lot of color on it. Almost all of the slots have been taken with some form of color, and I wanted new space to, you know, mix new colors and stuff like that. But I also felt like it was a waste if I just run it under the tap and, you know, wash away all of those pigment. So I wanted to use it, and that's how this challenge came about. The basic rule is only to use the color that's on the palette itself. I am not allowed to mix new paint or put new paint on the palette itself. If I need to mix color, I need to use what's already there. If I need new color, then tough luck. Mix it yourself or dilute your paint or plan it out mentally as much as you can. So it's an exercise on, well, it's actually an exercise on color schemes and rationing yourself out with your colors and it's just a fun challenge, I think. So, you guys can try it out if you want. Um, it's pretty fun. I had a lot of fun with it, and it wasn't as tough as I thought it was. I guess in part because the colors that I usually use is already on the palette itself. So there's a lot of skin tone, there's a lot of grays and blacks, and there's a good amount of blue. So I was already kind of set that I knew I would really have a lot of problems if I managed to ration the color well, which I did, so that's pretty cool. The rest of the colors, I needed to find some other way to, you know, incorporate it into the drawing since the goal was to clear the palette of color. Unfortunately, I did not completely manage that. I still have a lot of the pink-white thing here. The red was a lot more, you know, pigmented than I thought it would be, so there's a lot of red left. And there's still a good amount of that sort of apple greenish color right there. But the rest has been more or less cleared away. So I might do this challenge again using just those colors. And that would be a lot tougher since that would just be three colors and I'm already out of skin tone. <laughs> Other than that, I'm, I used my usual items. So I still used my fine liner. I forgot to use my white Sigma ball pen. Um, my, my white gel pen this time, and I didn't really need it since I managed to uh, make the highlights look really good, so I didn't need this extra oomph this time. But the only hard rule is not to add new paint, so you guys can make it easier or harder for yourself if you want, and have fun with it basically. I did do a drawing after seeing the color since I've had that color palette for months. And it's been like that. It's been that messy for months already. I just keep on finding a new color to it. So I basically knew what I was going to work with. But when I drew it, I didn't really have it completely in mind. I just knew that I had a, I had a lot of skin tones so I could work with a person. So I just drew... It's sort of random in a sense. Like, I didn't really... This isn't an existing character of mine. And the concept was just, I wanted to draw a girl, and I wanted to draw a really nice cape or cloak. And I wanted to do like that scalloped edge thing, and that's pretty much the gist of it. The rest, I just drew it out as I did the sketch in another notebook. And the background, as you can see, does not exist. So I knew since I had reds and greens and blues, uh, I needed to balance it somehow. So using red as somewhat my main color, because red among all the colors is, it takes the most attention. Uh, I needed to use it as the main color and configure the other colors to balance it out and tone them down so that it's not like clashing or too bright. So it's lucky that I had paints gray on the palette. so. I could use it for a lot of the parts, like the cloak and the skirt. And then the green, the apple green, surprisingly turned out 
really well with the red and I did add some blue to it just to tone it down a little and to make it a little bit more um, softer against the red so I was pretty fortunate that all my colors more or less, more or less worked out well together. The yellow, which isn't very yellow, I used it as like gold accents and used yellow ochre to just create shadows and stuff like that. Alright, so the paper or the notebook that I'm using is actually handmade. Uh, the paper, sadly, I cannot tell you what paper it is. I just know that it's a Canson paper. But when I used to buy this back in college, our prof just told us to go to the certain store and then ask for the Canson watercolor paper. But we don't know what GSM it is, nor what line of product it is. I don't know if it's the paper for Montval. I don't know if it's the paper for some other brand of theirs. So, unfortunately, I don't know what paper that is, but it's actually one of my favorites since okay, it has it has its pros and cons. The pro is it's very easy to make gradients and to do like faded towards a faded out type of thing. The con is it's a little bit tough to lift up the color from it because it will erode the paper a little bit. Unlike the usual pad that I use, as you've, if you've seen my older videos, I used like a cold press color, uh, cans and watercolor paper. But the pro of that is that it's easy to lift the color up. And it kind of makes it a bit more brilliant than this. The con of that is that it leaves like stark lines when you layer colors over, in, over each other. The pro of this paper that I'm using right now is that it's easy to blend it out. So it's just been a while since I, I used this paper so I had to try to figure out how to deal with it again. And yeah, I said it's handmade because I just cut the paper. This is really really huge paper and you just cut that in half or whatever size you want when you need it. So I decided to cut it in one Two. I, I think I cut it three times or even four even and then I bound I have like a, a homemade binder thing here or a home binding setup <laughs> I don't know how to describe it but I have that little small machine that you can bind notebooks with and I decided to do that and I made the cover with some rose colored slightly thick paper that I had lying around from college and I made this notebook. So I now have three sizes of watercolor paper uh, or watercolor pads. So there's the usual one that I use that's Canson, the the one with the green cover on it and the hot air balloon. And then this is the medium sized which is the one that I made myself. And the small size, I guess, would be would be the moleskin. Even though it's not a watercolor pad, it takes water somewhat decently. So, if I want a small notebook, I can use that. Surprisingly, the background turned out really well. I was a little scared when S last the blues and that apple green, and I didn't know if it would blend out well. And as you can see here, I'm scraping for color to just fill in the blanks. But when it dried, it soft it softened a bit when it dried, so it turned out really well. And then my next challenge was I didn't have any wood color or like any gray left, so I had to use yellow ochre for that fence thing, which still turned out pretty well. So I was pretty fortunate with this piece. And I really like how it turned out. So I might do another one with just whatever is left on the palette. Apparently I still have skin tone. Okay, so I have four colors. That's red, the pink, that yellow ochre thing, and uh, the apple green. And skin tone, I guess. So 
I hope you guys enjoyed this the preview. As you can see, it's really nice. I like it. So please follow me on Tumblr, Instagram, or DeviantArt. Like or subscribe. I do a lot of traditional and digital art. And I'll see you around.